So the big story is Ron DeSantis is literally doing human trafficking um, across federal lines to make a political point. It's kind of sickening. It's kind of disgusting. We're going to talk about it right here in just a moment. But uh, just a little bit of context. Not only is this something that um, Tucker Carlson has talked about and a lot of other right wingers have been musing about on their shows for several months, years even. It is something that Ron DeSantis himself has said he would use as a political cudgel. He's said this rhetorically in different campaign speeches that, oh, if these liberals care so much about, you know, the Republican lie that it, they want open borders and we're just letting people in willy nilly into our cities, scaremongering about crime and immigrants and what they really want to say and generalize about people from Latin America. Um, if they really feel so good about them, then let's just ship them to their cities. So they really did this. Um, <laughs> Yasmin, your boy, Greg Abbott, I'm kidding, but uh, the governor of Texas and the governor of Florida, Ron DeSantis, have been kind of talking about doing this, busing immigrants to D.C. in the Abbott case, and now in DeSantis's case, uh, flying migrants, uh, two dozen of them, at least in my understanding, to Martha's Vineyard, a popular vacation destination for a lot of liberals, let's say. For rich Democrats in, in Massachusetts, yeah. So Yes, absolutely. I, I, the plan backfired because the whole thing was like, oh, yeah, well, let's see how you guys like it. You know, you you can preach your, your you know, your pro-immigrant policies from Massachusetts because it's not a problem for you. So let's see how you do it. And it backfired on them because Massachusetts welcomed these immigrants. Spoiler alert. Sensational. So let us play that. For using taxpayer dollars to organize flights of asylum seekers to Martha's Vineyard. The backlash comes as the Democratic governor of California, Gavin Newsom, is asking the Justice Department to pursue kidnapping charges against Republican governors who are sending migrants to Democratic-run cities. CBS's Elaine Quijano is in Martha's Vineyard. The 48 asylum seekers, mainly from Venezuela, landed in Martha's Vineyard Wednesday afternoon aboard two planes from Texas and organized by Florida's Republican governor, Ron DeSantis. <laughs> Luis Fonseca says he left Venezuela to look for a better life for his three children who were still there. He didn't know he would end up here. They told me there was a work opportunity, he says. We were going to a city, but we ended up staying here. Democratic Massachusetts State Representative Dylan Fernandez called the move by DeSantis disgusting. Ron DeSantis is a coward. Only a coward uses women and children for their own political gain. Today, Governor DeSantis defended the flights, paid through a $12 million taxpayer-funded initiative. We take what's happening at the southern border very seriously, unlike some and unlike the President of the United States. The move follows similar steps taken by Texas Governor Greg Abbott. Today, about 100 migrants from Texas were dropped off near the vice president's Naval Observatory residence. So far, Abbott has bussed over 10,000 migrants to New York, Chicago, and Washington, D.C. Mayors in those cities called the actions political and shameful. In South Florida, a group of Venezuelan Americans criticized DeSantis. We demand him to stop using our pain, our suffering, and our desperation for his political gains. Republicans on Capitol Hill defended the Florida governor's actions today. As for the migrants who are here legally seeking asylum, officials here are looking into temporarily housing them at a military base in Cape Cod. Nora? Elaine Quijano, thank you. So, yeah, just as you were saying there, um, DeSantis was like, okay, balls in your court, liberals. See what you do here. And they're like, okay, we're... First of all, this is disgusting that you're using this as a political ploy. And second of all, we are going to take care of these migrants. We're going to treat them as people, not as political puppets. And we're going to take care of them because the country isn't. And like my two cents of it here, because I don't talk about these immigration things often, just out of like it's not in the news as much as it was in the Trump administration, is that this is something that only a systemic solution can address the fact that well 
we have a lot of people who are coming to the United States and coming um, over illegally. Well, why are they coming illegally? Number of reasons. There's a long line to get in legally. Why is there a long line to get in legally? Because there's a lot of opportunity in America still perceived to be that way. And because there is a huge deficit of opportunity. It's very dangerous in a lot of places in Central and South America. Why is it dangerous in a lot of places in Central and South America? Uh, the demand in the U.S. for drugs, the demand in the U.S. for guns that are flowing in and out of Central and South America. So that fuels the crime. That does all these other different things. The destabilization that the United States did over the course of the last 60, 70, 80 years in Central and South America does not help to say nothing of European imperialism overall. So, yeah, that's just to scratch the surface of the immigration issue and yeah. what the United States needs to kind of think about in a big picture kind of way into addressing it. But that's way too much for a lot of people on a broad sense to dig into. So I think that is something the left needs to work on overall is messaging this big picture systemic problem in a way so that people understand how we need to solve it. Well, that's the problem, right? Is we focus on Band-Aid solutions instead of actually going to the root of the problem because the root of the problem is oftentimes America, the United States of America, not doing something great, right? It's us doing something that makes us look bad. So they try to just ignore the things that we did bad and they try to fix the problem by not actually fixing it. So you can do all these things with like building a wall or whatever you want to do to prevent people from coming into the country. But until you fix the root of the problem, it's never going to go away. And what's interesting about that is these problems go back, you know, decades, if not, you know, maybe a century or so. And uh, specifically to what the United States did with, you know, like the banana republics in Central America and South America and in the Caribbean and places like that, things like that. So all the destabilization efforts that we've done it all comes back to us, right? And for us, if we're thinking, oh, that was like decades ago, that happened back then, blah, 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 that's not really a problem anymore, we're still seeing those repercussions play out in very, very real ways to the point that we have an immigration crisis here in the United States because of things that we did decades ago. And, you know, on my podcast, which I haven't done in a while, <laughs> but I need to, um, but on my podcast, you know, I look at the history of all these different countries and how these conflicts that we're dealing with today are rooted in history. And sometimes I end up going back centuries and centuries just to figure out where this problem started and where we are today. And to be fair, like I probably don't need to go back as far as I usually do, but a lot of times you can see where something started and then how that problem just kept getting worse and worse and worse over centuries, right? But because the root was never addressed in the first place and because they kept trying to band-aid over it and because these things just kept snowballing into something bigger, we we have these conflicts that we are still dealing with today in like 2022. So it is interesting. I'm just saying that the scope of the problem it's, it's, you know, a few decades ago, it's not that long ago. We can still go back and address those things that we did, but it would mean that the United States has to admit that we did these things. Yeah, that is, th those are, these are frameworks that I fear um, with a lot of certainty that America will not be able to grasp, either on a political level, on a societal level, yeah. politicians, even probably won't even be able to grasp this or they won't want to grasp this either because they'll see how they can use it for their own political advantages or they'll see how they can just brush it aside and not worry about it and still you know get some support like kind of skim by basically like the same thing democrats do all the time where they say we could address this social justice issue, but it might alienate voters, and that's some effort I could spend. And to be honest, I don't really care all that much. But a nicer way to say is that, you know, we can't prioritize it. Um, hopefully it doesn't end up in like that kind of situation. Yeah, and a lot of times, too, in politics, what you see is people who will give you like a, a really palatable solution to a problem, even though it doesn't actually change the circumstances for a lot of people, right? So if you take um, like the minimum wage issue, right? We're fighting for $15 minimum wage for people because that's what we say is, you know, the bare minimum of keeping up with inflation. But 
in reality, that's already an obsolete figure, right? Because inflation has gone even further than that. So the reality is that in order for minimum wage to be comparable with inflation these days, it would be closer to like $22 an hour, but we're still fighting for 15 because that's more palatable. That's an easier sell to the American people and to government, but the reality is it's still not enough, right? So at the end of the day, people still are making less than what they should be making. So we, we have all these like compromises and appeasements and things like that, but I mean, how much functional difference does it actually make? Yeah. Um, really good comment here from Nina Turner's Pet Dragon, who is usually watching on YouTube, but is joining on Twitch because they love seeing their name on screen. No, I'm just kidding. But um, we enjoy having you here. And um, Adam really agrees with this following comment, too. But uh, they say... Mm -hmm. This story needs to be covered heavily, but it makes me sick to my stomach. He is playing with people's lives. They have lawyers and family and court dates, but Ron just sent them away under the guise of work for political points and laughs. What about the kids you put on that bus? They didn't have food. They went hungry on that trip and you dropped them off at an unknown area. But hey, pro-life, right? Protect the children, right? Sorry about the rant, but I'm pissed. Yeah, I mean, they lied to these people and said that they were going to like be processed or something like that. But then mm -hmm. they sent them somewhere else where they 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 didn't even end up where they thought they were going. So you, it is just kidnapping people. It is trafficking people, and it's mean. It's, it's it's so cruel to do this to people. But and then on top of that, you're costing taxpayers money for all of that you're doing. This these political sense that you're doing just because you want to run for president one day and you think that this is going to endear you to the public, the immigrant hating public right the immigrant hating part of the of the population that you're actually trying to to attract with your votes um it's really sad and it's it's wasteful and it's mean it's just like there's no humanity in any of this ron DeSantis has zero empathy and he he shouldn't be a leader anyone who has zero empathy and doesn't understand that you're actually trying to govern people should not be a leader that's what it comes down to yeah, this man is disgusting, uh, but at the end of the day, this is the culture war. This is red meat. He is trying to ignite his base for his own reasons. And like on Fox News, they're already eating this up. Um, I have a clip I'm going to play from, it looks like a Fox and Friends coverage of this. And... Let's see if this is the one I want to play compared to any other cover. Yeah, yeah. So I'm going to play this clip from Fox and Friends so we can see how they're contextualizing it for their base. Because this is red meat for them. This is ultimately, if it's not winning voters, it's helping people um, on the Republican side electrify them to motivate, motivate them to vote. Oh, they know? You know, they saw you yesterday. Yesterday, 3 o'clock in the afternoon, more people from other countries wound up going to Martha's Vineyard. It was at 3 o'clock yesterday afternoon that a couple of planes with 50 Venezuelan mi migrants uh, arrived, apparently courtesy of Ron DeSantis. Apparently nobody was alerted on the island before they showed up. Uh, some of the people, according to the Boston Globe, did not know where they were. Well, you know what? If you don't know where you are, you're in Martha's Vineyard, one of the most spectacular progressive right. celebrity destinations in the world. It's not a great time to buy, though, uh, if you're in a league. I don't think they're in the market. Oh, they know? You no. know, they sell you. They have, well, if you're an agent, if you have one of those gold jackets, go down. So all of the points that Nina Turner's pet dragon just made right there about how these are real people's lives, how these are children who are lost and without food. These are adults who are lost, who are promised work to be able to provide for themselves and their children. And they're being further separated and being used as a political plot and being put on TV for ignorant Americans to make fun of on air and ignorant Americans to laugh at, to devoid all of these people of humanity. This is what's going on on the other side makes me so angry it's i mean it's disgusting and it, it, it's like what i said like they don't see immigrants as people which is really just 
it, I mean, it, it, it is racist. Like, I don't know what else to call it. You know, it's just that. And just the fact that somebody speaks a different language from you, just because you can't understand them, that's their fault. Like you, you demean them and you act like they're less intelligent because you can't understand the words that they're saying. It's the same thing. They could be very eloquent people, but if they are speaking with an accent that you don't like, then you think that they're less than you. Right. And it, it, it doesn't make any sense. It's a very ignorant way to go about the world, to exist within the world, especially as a leader. You know, some, wh wh why do you want that job? Like, you obviously don't want the job for the right reasons. You don't want to be in that position for the right reasons. You don't want to serve the public. You don't even like the public. You don't even like the people, right? It's like, it's like Cersei Lannister, you know, like, but she, that's a monarchy. This is the government. Why do we elect people like this? That's the question. Are you watching that new Game of Thrones reboot yet? No, I haven't watched it. Are, are you? I haven't yet. My roommates are getting into it. Here's, I mean, like, I'm not even going to call this a spoiler alert, but, like, this is the minorest of spoiler alerts, so here goes. Maybe mute it for the next 30 seconds or whatever. But really not a spoiler at all, honestly. They're reusing the same theme music that they did for the regular Game of Thrones. That's dumb. Right? Like I That's haven't seen dumb. I haven't seen That's anything weak. of the show. All I all I remember is like hearing the music and I remember like hearing it in my room and I'm like, "Oh, that's cool. My um housemates are watching rewatching episodes of Game of Thrones to prepare for House of Dragon." And I walk out there and I'm like, you know, kind of like watching it with them vibing whatever and I'm like, "Wait, no, these are entirely new se scenes." I realize there're three episodes in, so I got a random out of context spoiler thing, but I'm like, yeah. "Wait, they use the same intro music?" And yeah, this is maybe I haven't gotten I haven't heard a bigger thing about this, but I think there should be about seven think pieces about that alone. I haven't heard a bigger thing about this. Yeah, they're like trying to I feel like they're trying to bait us with that theme music because that was the best part of the show. And I like people. I have a lot of issues with the way Game of Thrones ended and I'm still not over it as just as a, as a matter of like, I don't want to rewatch the series. I rewatch series all the time. I've never, I don't even feel like rewatching Game of Thrones, right? Because I just know that I'm going to get to a certain point in the rewatch and I'm just going to get pissed all over again. And, but the one thing that people really, really, I think hold in their hearts is that theme song. It was great. I didn't never skip the intro to that show. I watched the intro every time. There's only a few shows where I watched the intro every time. And that was one of them. And uh, it feels like they're trying to trick me. And I don't appreciate that. And also just get your own theme music. Like It feels like they're trying to prove to their uh, new boss overlords at Discovery that they are doing some cost cutting measures. They are like looking out for the bottom line. Uh, but... I, here's my philosophy with theme songs that I like with shows that I like that I'm watching. Okay. I watch it for the first episode of the series and I watch it for the finale. But other than that, I'm a big fan of the little skip intro button that the streamers have now. Um, yeah. I, I, I need to just get to the goods, especially if like they left me on a cliffhanger. That's one of the benefits of uh, Gen Z TV is that, no, no, don't show me the theme song as like foreplay. No, get me straight to the goods. Just get me like, like right where I want songs. to. 